All right, so our first lesson, um, I'm going to start with uh, what we call e electrostatics. Okay, so um, the first thing that we know from electrostatics is uh, Coulomb's law, which simply states the force between two point charges. Okay, let's call it Q1 and Q2. Is directly proportional to the magnitude of their charges and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart. Now, of course, this is uh, quite simple to apply. And the first thing that you know, for instance, if I've got uh, two point charges, let's just say for argument's sake, uh, one is. 1,5 microcoulombs, the other one is 1 microcoulombs, positive 1 and minus 1,5 microcoulombs respectively. They're placed a distance apart. Now let's say that distance, just for argument's sake, is going to be uh, 0 0,3 meters apart. Okay, so charge A and charge B placed that distance apart. So how do we actually calculate the electrostatic force between them? Right, so the first thing is that we're going to take F is equals to K, Q1, Q2, divided by R squared, or you can say QA, QB in this case. Now, we know that Coulomb's constant, okay, this is a constant, it's given in your question paper, or in your answer sheet, your, your data sheet rather. Um, this is 9 times 10 to the power 9, okay, multiplied by the charge, okay, the first one. Now, I would advise that you do not use uh, the sign uh, uh, on the charge. I'll tell you what we'll use the sign for, but uh, for now, what we substitute here is the magnitude of the charge and not necessarily the sign in corner. Now, micro simply means it's times 10 minus uh, 6, please, if you don't know this, uh, just make sure that you refer to a table, okay, uh, where you can get these. Uh, but micro is times 10 minus 6, so this is positive 1 times 10 minus 6 uh, divided by the distance between them. It must always be meters, so this is going to be 0, 0,3 uh, squared. Now, how do we calculate that? All right, we're going to drag our calculator over here. All right, now, uh, these Casio calculators are quite good because uh, you can be able to do the calculation um, uh, um, just using a, a, an exponent button there. Just look at what I'm going to do. So you just simply say 9, okay, for that times 10, okay, I just simply press this button. Uh, times 10 x now it's waiting for me to put the power it's 9 okay so 9 all right and then I press this button 9 and then multiplied by uh, 1,5 exponent now for the minus part I'm going to use the one here right at the top there minus 6 multiplied by one exponent uh, another minus 6 there and then uh, divided by, so I'm going to take our button right at the bottom there, okay, 0, 0,3, and remember, it's the square of the distance. So normally learners just make uh, a mistake with that and they leave the square part. Okay, and what do we get? We get a value of 3 over 20. I'm going to take that to the decimal, and that becomes 0, 0,15. Now, this is 0, 0,15 newtons of force but what does that mean now we know that unlike charges attract right and like charges repel each other now we know here we've got a negative and a positive so it means that the force that exists between a and b is a force of attraction okay so it's a force of attraction now we could interpret that in different ways the first way could be to say that it means that A attracts B towards itself, okay, at a force, or with a force rather, of 0 0.19 newtons, okay? 
Newton 3 says if body A exerts a force on body B, then body B will exert an equal but opposite force on A. So it also means that B also exerts a force of 0 0.15 Newtons, okay, uh, towards itself, okay? So uh, another way of interpreting, we can also say that A and B attract one another with a force of 0 0.15 Newtons. You'll see where that becomes uh, um, uh, quite important later, all right? Now, these are grade 11 calculations. Um, most likely is that our examiners are not going to give us something um, this basic, okay? So what I want us to do is to look at a, a typical question that we probably might be asked uh, in our curriculum. So I'm going to move over to the other side here. Right, so I'm just going to make sure I, I, I try to uh, do this question so that you can understand it. Now, suppose we've got, all right, uh, here it is, we've got uh, three point charges, okay? So I've got charge A, I've got charge B, and I've got charge C, all right? Suppose the distance between A and C, okay? Let's say that's 0 0.5 meters, okay? And let's say the distance between B and C is 0 0.2 meters, all right? So let's give this, let's say this is minus 1 microcoulomb. Let's say this is positive 2 microcoulomb. Let's say this is minus 2 microcoulomb, just about, let's say, okay? Right, now... Um, what they would probably ask us here is to calculate okay, the net force on one of them. I could choose any. So calculate the net force, let's say exerted, exerted on B by A. Uh, by A and C. I'm sorry for that uh, terrible bad handwriting there. All right, so now we want to calculate, okay, the net force of exerted on charge B, all right? Now think about it. It means that uh, A exerts a force on B. We're going to look at the nature of that force in just a while. And then it also means that B, uh, uh, sorry, C, charge C, also exerts a force on B. But we want to look into the nature. What type of force is that? Now, the first thing that I'm going to ask you uh, to do, I'm just going to use a different color for that. Uh, in fact, different colors uh, so that we can see it clearly. Right, I'm going to ask you to draw some kind of a force diagram in a sense. Okay, so which one is our, uh, uh, um, is our point of focus or which one is the one that we're focusing on. We're focusing on B. Why? Because we want to know the net force that, a, that is exerted on B, right, by both A and C. So it means that we're going to focus our attention on which one? On B. All right? Now have a look at this. So it means that I'm going to just draw a little bit of a, a force diagram there showing me the forces that are exerted. Now, so it means that, look at this, I'm going to now focus on B. Uh, let's forget about C a little bit, okay? Now look at A and B, all right? What type of a force, all right? What is the nature of the force between A and B? Well, you'll say to me, that's a negative charge and that's a positive charge. So it means that the nature of the force that exists between them, again, is a force of attraction. Why? Because we said unlike charges attract one another, isn't it? So now it means that the force between A and B, what is that? It's a force of attraction. But now, think about it. When it's, two, when it's a force of attraction, right, it means that they are pulling each other closer. Now, please have a look at this. We are focusing only on B. So here's A, here's B. What are they doing to each other? They are pulling each other closer. 
So where would B go because of A? Why am I focusing on B? Because B is the one that we're trying to calculate. So where would B go because of A? So it means as they attract each other, and look at that, means the direction that B would go or the force that would be exerted on B by A would be towards the west, okay? So it means, I'm going to draw that there. So this is the force that A exerts on B. So this is the force between A and B, all right? Now, let's have a look at the force between uh, uh, B and C, okay? Because I want us to do something with that force again. Right, so have a look at this. Now, once again, I'm looking at B and see what is the nature of the force that exists, uh, exists between B and C. So once again, it's unlike charges, okay? So what type of a force exists between them? Here's B, here's C, right? What are they doing to each other? They are pulling each other closer, but which one are we focusing on? We are focusing on B, all right? So it means that as we look at them, they are pulling each other closer. We're focusing on B. So where would B go because of uh, C? Or where would, uh, what is the direction of the force that C would exert on B? It would be, now look at this, B would go in that direction. So it would be towards the east. Now, in this case, I can see that the distance between B and C is smaller. Okay, if you look at that, that's 0 0.5. And that's going to be 0, 0,2. So it means the distance there would be 0, 0,3. So it means that the distance between B and C is actually smaller than the distance between A and B. So that kind of tells me, because we know that the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance, it means that the force that would be exerted between B and C should be uh, slightly bigger than the force that uh, is exerted uh, between, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the force between B and C rather is bigger than the force that is exerted between A and B. So this is the force. Now look at my force diagram. You can clearly see there that the force here is uh, um, the line that I've drawn here. This side is actually longer than the line that I've drawn on this side. So indicating to you that the magnitude of this force should be bigger. Now have a look at this. So now we know from Newton's second law, we did that in the past. So we know um, uh, uh, um, in this case, if B was to accelerate, it would accelerate in the direction of the net force. Now, where is that net force? So taking A and B into consideration, uh, and sorry, force AB and force BC into consideration, clearly the force BC is greater than the force AB. So you'd end up having a net force in the direction, okay? So this would be the direction of our net force. Are you all with me? Right, now, I want us to now calculate that net force. We're going to do what we have done, uh, uh, like in the previous calculation. Let's take the black one, okay? So I'm going to calculate the force between A and B. That's going to be K, Q, A. QB divided by R squared. Now let's calculate that force. We said that's 9 exponent 9 multiplied by the charge of A. I said for now, we're not worried about the mag uh, about uh, the sign, but we, might, we, we want just the magnitude of it. So that's going to be 1. That's micro again. So that's 1 times 10 minus 6 multiplied by another. Uh, now the charge of B is... 2 times 10 minus 6 divided by the distance between them. Now, look at that. If the distance between A and C is 0, 0,5, okay, and the distance between B and C is 0, 0,2, so it means how would I be able to get this distance here? It would definitely be 0, 0,5 minus that 0, 0,2, and in this case, that would give me 0, 0,3. So the distance between A and B is 0, 0,3. So, right, please don't forget to square that, okay? Right, once again, we're going to take out a calculator. We're going to say just like we did, okay? So, that our fraction button, 
right? We're going to say that's 9 exponent 9 multiplied by 1 exponent minus 6 times 2 exponent minus 6, okay? Let's go to the bottom, divide that by 0, 0,3, okay, squared, and what do we get? We get 0, 0,2. So the force that I get there is 0, 0,2 newtons but now let's state a direction we know the force between a and b all right i'm going to take the points of a compass into consideration okay we know that's our north line okay um you know just in case you forget uh, and i know it always happens with me so i always say everybody it's we all right so west is this side and east is that side so we know in this case uh, that's north, east, that's west, that's south, okay? So now we know that the force between A and B is in which direction? Towards the west, okay? Right, now let's do the same. Uh, I'm going to do that over here. I don't have a lot of space. Okay, let's calculate the force between B and C. So we're going to say that's KQ of B, Q of C, divided by r squared, okay? So let's calculate that force there. That's nine exponent nine. Oh, just see me trying to squeeze all of that in there. Okay, that's two exponent minus nine, okay? Multiplied by another two exponent, uh, sorry, minus six, I'm sorry about that, uh, minus six. Um, uh, so that's 9 exponent 9, that's 2 exponent minus 6 because that's micro, okay, uh, times another 2 exponent minus 6, okay, so we could have actually said uh, 2 exponent minus 6 all squared, okay, right, and then divided by the distance between B and C is 0, 0,2, so that's going to be 0, 0,2 squared. Okay, so uh, once again, we go to our calculator. Let's do that quickly. Uh, that's 9 exponent 9 multiplied by 2 exponent minus 6. Uh, there's, a, there's actually another way in which you can do that much quicker uh, just by looking at the scaling factor. Okay, but uh, that's another story for another day. Divided by 0, 0,2. Okay, uh, squared, right, so we get 0 0.9. So in this case, we get 0 0.9 newtons. You see exactly what we said. The force between B and C is greater than the force between uh, A and B. So in this case, in which direction is it? It's to the east, okay? Now, we know from uh, Newton's laws, right, that if we've got two forces that are in two different directions, okay, of course in the same plane, uh, in this case we simply are going to take the difference between those forces to get the, the net force. Or if you wanted to, you can give direction. Say you could have said, uh, take east as your positive, okay? So it means that your net force in this case would be equals to uh, FBC, it's positive because it's towards the east, plus, but you know your force between A and B would be negative because it's in the opposite direction. So in this case, uh, what do you have? FBC, that's going to be 0, 0,9, that's our positive force, minus, okay, uh, 0, 0,2, okay, they are in two different directions, so it means that your net force would be what? 0, 0,7, but in which direction would it be? It would be in the direction of your bigger force, so in this case, it would be towards the east, okay? So that is the net force between A, and, uh, I mean, uh, uh, that is exerted on B by A and C. I hope that makes sense, okay? Right.